the Duchess of Cambridge hosted the festive event, which was attended by a number of members of the royal family, at Westminster Abbey in London on Wednesday. The carol concert is set to be broadcast on ITV on Christmas Eve at 7.30pm. Kate wore a festive red dress and heels for the carol service, while William was smart in a suit and tie matching his wife. In a touching nod to Her Majesty, the Duchess wore a pair of earrings owned by the Queen. Kate styled her glossy brunette hair in curls which she wore loose around her shoulders. In a moving message for the Together at Christmas service, the Duchess said the coronavirus pandemic showed the importance of simply being together. She said, We have lost loved ones, seen our frontline workers placed under immeasurable pressure, and we have experienced heart-wrenching isolation from those we hold most dear. Alongside this, we have seen how communities have come together to support those most in need. And through our separation from others, we have been reminded just how powerful human connection is to us all. Just how much we need one another. And how loving and feeling a sense of belonging to one another can provide comfort in tough times. The importance of simply being together. Kate added, Christmas is a time when we can reflect on the past, listen to one another, focus on the relationships that nurture us and build our resilience, so we can look forward to a brighter shared future. The Royals were out in force with Sophie Wessex, Zara, and Mike Tyndall, Princess Beatrice, Edardo Mopelli Mozzi and Princess Eugenie joining the Cambridges. Carol Middleton, Pippa Middleton, James Middleton and his wife Alizy Thevenet were also seen arriving at the event. The concert reflects on the challenges of the Covid pandemic and pays tribute to the people and organisations who have supported communities throughout. Carols were sung by the Westminster Abbey Choir as part of the festive event. Singers Ellie Golding and Leona Lewis were among those performing at the festive gathering. The Duke of Cambridge, British Paralympian and junior Dr. Kim Daybell, and presenter Kate Garraway, whose husband Eric Draper spent a year in hospital after contracting coronavirus, all gave readings. And there was a performance of To The Day, a composition created for the occasion by poet and writer Lem Sisse. Among the guests were people in community networks, charitable organizations and the patronages of the Queen, Prince Charles, and Camilla, and the Cambridges. Those who William and Kate met and spent time with during recent engagements also attended, as well as armed forces personnel involved in Operation Pitting the UK's evacuation of civilians from Afghanistan after the Taliban takeover. The concert is being aired on ITV after a last-minute switch from the BBC following a row over a documentary last month. BBC Two's The Princes and the Press, presented by self-avowed Republican Amol Rajan, looked at the relationship between William, Prince Harry and the media. In a rare joint statement, Buckingham Palace, Clarence House and Kensington Palace hit out at the two-part documentary. The three royal households criticized the program for giving credibility to overblown and unfounded claims. The controversial documentary prompted the royals to snub the BBC, and move the broadcast of the carol service to ITV. Lady Louise Windsor turned 18 last month, and her milestone birthday granted her the opportunity to gain the title of princess, if she wished. There was lots of speculation of whether Louise would take the title after her parents aimed for her to live a more normal life. It is not known what decision Lady Louise has made yet. The list, has reported on Louise's big decision. They said, Lady Louise Windsor turned 18 on November 8, 2021, and the landmark birthday presented an opportunity for her biggest transformation to date. As noted by Tatler, when Louise was born, her parents, Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, decided not to give her the title of princess. While she could have been given the title, her parents opted for the title of lady, in hopes that it would allow their daughter to have a more down-to-earth childhood. While her parents' wish of a life outside of the public eye has definitely been granted, it's up to Louise herself now that she's 18 whether she would like to inherit the title of princess or not. Louise is expected to work just like anyone else she can't rely on the royal family to sustain her life, nor can her work solely consist of royal duties. 
As such, only time will tell if Louise chooses to take on the title that would absolutely set her apart in society. While Sophie has previously said that it's unlikely that Louise would take the Her Royal Highness title, speculation has emerged that she might, given Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's exit from the firm, as well as Andrew's current legal fight. Lady Louise has been more visible in the public eye this year and even made her on-screen debut. She spoke about her late grandfather on the BBC's Prince Philip, the royal family remembers. Louise recalled their shared love for carriage driving, saying, The Duke of Edinburgh has been so involved in my driving which has been so lovely but slightly scary because he invented the sport pretty much. It's incredible to have learned first-hand from him and definitely made us closer, I think. Kate Middleton photo infuriated Prince William, very angry. Trademark. Prince William recalls Queen TMS passion for walking her corgis in mental health post. Princess Charlene's praise of incredible Prince Harry, got to get to know him better she added, after a competition, he would always ask how it went. His eyes would light up because he just gets so excited when he talks about it. When we would go carriage driving, first of all, he would take me on a different route every day, I do not know how he managed to do that, but tell me all sorts of anecdotes about absolutely anything and everything. He's honestly one of the most interesting people, I've ever met. She was dubbed, lovely lady Louise after her charming appearance. Trial is taking place in Thurgood Marshall US Courthouse in Lower Manhattan. Maxwell, the former associate of Jeffrey Epstein, is facing eight charges including six counts of enticing minors and sex trafficking. Maxwell could be sentenced to 80 years in prison if found guilty of all counts. She denies all the charges. Prince Andrew has been referred to three times already in the trial. Epstein TMS pilot, Epstein TMS former housekeeper and one of the alleged victims, Jane, have all spoken of the Prince TMS relationship with Epstein. Larry Vizowski, the pilot, was asked if Prince Andrew flew on the plane of Epstein, to which he replied, yes he did but he could not recall the exact dates. Along with Andrew, both Donald Trump and Bill Clinton were both named as being passengers on occasion. As this evidence came to light, Andrew was spotted driving around Windsor. The 61-year-old has categorically denied having any sexual contact with an American woman, who says she was forced to have sex with him aged 17. In the prosecution TMS opening statement, the court was told how Maxwell allegedly targeted young girls and manipulated them. After doing so, Maxwell reportedly was serving them, the girls, up for sexual abuse to Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein killed himself in 2019 while in jail. Federal prosecutor Lara Pomerantz told jurors, she preyed on vulnerable young girls, manipulated them, and served them up to be sexually abused. Ms. Pomerantz also said Maxwell and Epstein were partners in crime and described them as dangerous predators who sexually exploited and abused children for a decade. Sky News US correspondent Martha Kellner reported on the ongoing trial from New York. She wrote, Gislen Maxwell is the one sitting behind the defense table, intermittently jotting down notes and whispering to her lawyers but Jeffrey Epstein's presence looms large over this trial. Epstein died by suicide in 2019 and Maxwell's lawyers have argued that she is being held responsible for his crimes. In order to establish her guilt, prosecutors must establish what Epstein did, too. The jury has heard about his homes, in New Mexico, Little St. James and a property in Palm Beach, which was run like a five-star hotel, complete with a 58-page rule book and instruction that the housekeeper shouldn't TMT look him in the eye. Pictures were shown of his private jet with a full kitchen and a round room with donut-shaped couch and a passenger list which included Prince Andrew and two former presidents, Donald Trump and Bill Clinton. An alleged victim, testifying anonymously under the pseudonym Jane, says she was dazzled by Epstein's wealth and connections. Crucially, though, Jane also says that Maxwell played a role in the abuse, too, including the grooming process. 
The prosecution case hinges on being able to show that Maxwell was Epstein's partner in crime and also responsible for what, in many cases, has been lifelong suffering.